So the next thing on the list is the fuel lift pump on the Evan Road. We've got a service kit for it, so we'll remove it from the engine because I think that's the easiest way of doing it. And we shall change the service parts in it. So the way this pump works is that it's a mechanical pressure pulse pump. The diaphragm inside the pump is driven by a pulse hose, which is down here, which is connected to the, the cylinder crankcase. And the vacuum from the lift pump pulls fuel from the fuel tank. And once it reaches the pump, the internal pump pressure forces the fuel from the pump through the fuel filter, which is up here, and into the vapor separator. It's pretty straightforward. A few diaphragms, wobbly valves inside. But we'll remove it and take it apart. What I have done is there's three clamps, one, which is three hoses. There's a pressure pulse hose down here, which is held on by a cable tie. So I think we'll cut that off and remove that hose from there. I've already got ahead and removed the clamp off here. And there's another one here. So I'm going to remove that one. And then it's just held on with these two screws, that one there and that one there. So I think if we just connect all three hoses, take the two screws off, we should be able to withdraw the whole thing as one. So the pair of side cutters, I've just cut through the side of that clamp there, and now we should be able to just pull the clamp off, if I can get a hold of it. I think I'll have to use two hands. So there we go. I've cut that clamp off there, off this one. Just use a pair of side cutters, just cut through the side there, and you sort of just pull them off. I do believe these are just one use uh, clamps because you do use a sort of a crimper to close them. So I've removed this one, removed this one. We'll just push the hoses off. But what I'm going to do is we're going to take a picture and maybe mark the hoses just to make sure we know which hose is which. And then down here, like I said, on the pulse hose, there's a cable tie. We'll cut that off and we'll remove the hose from that block there and it'll keep it keep it on the pump. Okay, so I've taken the two hoses off here. I've unclipped the cable tie on here, and I've taken the two screws that mount it, which are the bottom left and bottom right. It's now just a case of just removing it, and that hose at the bottom there should just pop straight off. There we go. So that's it off. And there we have it. There's the fuel pump. So here we go. Here's the kit that it comes with part number there and the instructions and for some reason the instructions and the actual bag have different part numbers I imagine one's been superseded and here's the parts and you have a little bag there with the um, the one with valves so let's start by tearing this down so we're going to take this cover off first which is sort of like the the inlet And inside there we've got a, a mesh screen and an O-ring, which we have a spare of. And they call that the large cover O-ring, which is this one here. So that screen is pretty clean. So we'll just put the new O-ring over the top there. So we know that's good to go. Put that to one side. Now further in, <clears throat> we have another O-ring. This one's called the small cover O-ring. So we're going to remove that and discard it. And in this little bag of goodies, we do have the new O-ring. So we'll take it down further, we've got four screws here, so we'll just take these off. I'm not sure if all these screws are the same size, they seem to be, but I'm going to keep them se segregated just in case they're slightly different. Here we go, is the last one. Okay. 
and now the pump is open. We've got a spring there, which sits on the diaphragm. This one's just like a small cup. Keep that to one side. Take that diaphragm off. And that's the underside. Which has another gasket on, which we'll be removing. So I just remove that little spring there, which just sits in there. And we've got this gasket top plate. This gasket seems a bit stuck down, so I'm going to have to scrape this one off. So we'll just try and scrape as much of this gasket off as we can by hand. But I think I'm going to have to get a, like a razor blade on it just to get the remainder off because it looks like it's been stuck down with some sort of adhesive. Yeah, I got the majority off there, but I'll just get a razor blade and scrape the rest off. It's also worth noting that in this kit there are parts because this is for this repair kit's for engines from 1990 and newer th from 9.9 .9 to 155 model Evinrude and Johnsons. So there are parts in this kit of this fuel pump that aren't the same as other ones. So you will, you might have things left over. So if you do, don't panic. It's just that's just how it is. It does it does mention it in the manual when you are uh, with the kit that you will have parts left over if it's a different engine. So we'll just go ahead with this razor blade here and I'll. Just try and get the majority of this off. There we go, so that's all cleaned. I'm happy with the condition of that face now. It's just a bit tarnished, but the gasket's off. So for changing the parts, the first one we've got here is on this little red spring. And we just basically one for one it with the new one that we've got here in the new kit. So there's the new one, no real difference in it. And we'll just sit it on there. I believe that one's called the Air Dome Support. Let's come over to this part. This part is part of like the diaphragm pump itself. And we've got the, the sort of the check valves here, one on each side. So we'll pop them out and we've got the two new ones to put in. Now there is a special way of putting them in. Um, I'll explain that in a second. So before we pull these out, the way they're installed is you've got to be careful not to damage them these check valves and it says on the manual to place a small drop of oil on the stem of each check valve and install the check valves by pushing the stem through the center hole with your fingertip or a pencil eraser until the enlarged head is through the housing it says don't use your fingernail pencil point or any other tool to install check valves or valve damage and permanent failure will result so basically just be careful. We're gonna I'm gonna pull these out. And then on the new ones here, I've got, there's two of these. These are the check valves. Put a small drop of oil on, and then we'll push them back through. So we'll just take hold of them here and we'll just pop them out if we can. There's the first one out. And here's the second one. Yep, the second one's out. So like it says to install them, got them here. I'll put a small drop of oil on each one, on the tip. A small bit of oil on my finger there. And I'll just put it around the tip there. And again on the second one here. 
just to aid the installation. Okay, so let's push the first one through. So we'll just get, take the first one here, line up with the hole, and then we'll just push it straight through. As we can see on the back, the tip has come all the way through. And then for the second one, so we're going to do it on the other side, I'm going to line the hole up there, and then I'm just going to firmly push it through in one fluid motion. So we can see the tip is through on that side. So there's the check valves installed in the correct manner. So now it's just a case of basically reassembling the whole thing. So down the bottom here, we've got this new gasket. We'll just set that gasket on there. A small air dome support, which just aligns into the little hole, if I can, if I can get it in. There we go, that's it in. Next part to go on to this section is the diaphragm, which we'll just lay over the top there. Yep, so we've got the diaphragm on there. Then this part here. We'll just lay down on top. Just like that. bit of tension on it now. So now we've got this gasket plate and this top cover which comes on top. And what we can do now is we can put some screws in to retain it all but what I want to do is I just want to, I just want to take it apart again just make sure that everything's in its correct position. Um, I'm pretty confident it is but just to be doubly sure. Yep, so I've just taken some, I just took some of the, the tension off there as I'm pushing down. I just checked to make sure the springs and everything were in the correct positions, which they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put some screws in now, get it all the way through into the body at the bottom. This is where if gaskets can misaligned a little bit, have a little bit of trouble. But they don't seem to be misaligned at all. So we should be able to just get them all straight in there. I'll take a screwdriver here and we'll just try and nip one of them down. There we go. So now I'm happy with the position, we'll just screw them down. Okay, and now we've got the, the final piece to go on. Just an O-ring on top there. And this cover. Which, as we remember, we put an O-ring on the top here. That's a brand new O-ring, and there's an O-ring there. And we'll screw this piece down. And remember in the position, it's roughly Round about there. And there we go. So that's the fuel pump done. Nothing looks out of place. Nothing's sticking out. Go to shake. And we're not hearing anything rattling around, which is a good sign. And we've got no pieces left over from the kit that aren't used in this fuel pump, which is a good result. So now it's just a case of reinstalling it in the reverse. Obviously you've got the top, bottom, two hoses, and this bottom pulse hose to reconnect, and that's it done. If you want to make sure it's working before you put it back on, you can on each of these, on the, the two pipes here. If you just put your mouth over it, suck or blow, each one should only do it in one direction. Um, if you can blow and suck on one of them, it means the check valve's not sealing properly. Um, 
likewise if you can do it on the other one or, or if you can't blow it or suck they're, they're not seated correctly just a, a quick little way of testing it obviously this is the pulser from the crankcase but these two suck or blow on each one in turn just to make sure that it is working so we're just going to reassemble it now what we're going to do is start with the uh, the main feed in and that comes on to this one here the output to the vapor separator is on from this one or the to the to the main fuel pump comes off this one which is that one down there which i've just disconnected also this one from the pulse goes onto that uh, fit in there which is the crankcase so there we go i've got the hoses back on all three all connected um, but before I put it back onto the actual bracket, I'm just going to put some fuel in the tank, prime the system up, and just check for any leaks, and then we'll get it secured. So apart from that, that's the fuel pump done. Just got those, like I say there's those two screws to reattach to that bracket there, but it's a two minute job. So I'll just check for leaks, and that's it.